Hi, welcome to the podcast. I'm glad to have Amber Price here today, and it's going to be really fun to talk with her exactly about the things I talk about with this new rebrand I've done with this podcast and everything I'm doing now with coaching and just in general, the message I feel like is so powerful and we connected well on this together of the strong sense of self. So welcome to the podcast today. I'm glad to have you here, Amber. Thanks. I'm excited to chat. So tell us about yourself before we jump into what it means to have a strong sense of self. And she also, I guess too, um, she is going to be where you right now and getting your PhD in this particular, this subject. And that's what's yeah. so cool about it. She knows so much about what it really means to have a strong sense of self and why it's so important. So yeah, tell us about you. <laughs> Okay. So yeah, I'm Amber. I am a mom to four boys. They're getting to be kind of older. They're teenagers mostly now, which is weird. I still feel young. Um, I live in Utah and I am going to school at BYU. Like you said, I love chocolate. That's the main thing. I drink hot <laughs> chocolate almost every single day year round. That includes summer, like July. I sit out on my back deck and I drink my hot chocolate. That's awesome. Which is weird. I know. <laughs> but no, I love it. So great. Yum. Yeah. I love, um, really love dancing, but I'm not a dancer. So I love to go to classes like Zumba at the gym. Nice. And I love to read and just be around people. Yeah. And so, so tell us more about the sense of self that you are also trying to do this with, um, getting that message out there for just the everyday normal woman, just trying to figure that out. Like you're doing making courses and things. Tell us more about that, what that, what you're doing with that. Um, yeah, I mean, my research at school is sense of self is exactly what I'm researching and, and it ties into several other concepts, which I think you and I will talk about throughout this, but just mm -hmm. that idea that you have to be able to maintain who you are in the context of a relationship or the relationship doesn't go that well. And so, yeah, I've put together a couple of courses relating to this and I'm just trying, especially with women, women are my own personal passion uh, as a woman, you know, but, um, and just, I think it's so easy for us to lose that sense of self, especially when we're moms, it's kind of starts to slip away in our parenting and in our marriage or things like that. And it's actually so damaging to us when we do that. And so I just really want women to understand how important having a sense of self is. Right. You are the solid, you need to be solid in whatever situation will come in and out of life. I feel mm -hmm. like that's how it is when you're you're single, you're ha having that solid sense of self will be so helpful Then when you're married, but not emotionally attaching too much. And that's that way where you're just codependent with your spouse, then making sure you're not codependent and you use vicariously through your kids. And then when they leave it, I could see it being just like a really layered onion for women. If they yeah. focus on this, it's so important that at some point it'll start to become a problem if it's not or on the other hand, it starts to flourish that it you're doing, you're, you're able to expand yourself so much more when you then have the solid sense of self. And we all want to do that. We want to reach out and connect with others more. We want to be good in our communities and do service and just have a fulfilling and rewarding life, but it has to have that sense of self. Yeah. What you said about the onion is the analogy I always use when I talk about it too. Like, oh, really? <laughs> I mean, if you think of a relationship or anything, it's, it's like an onion and there's all these layers, but right down at that core is who you are and how you feel about who you are and everything else that goes out from there is tied into that. So that part needs to be healthy. Right. And I feel like a lot of times when people are having challenges in their relationships or things like that, they think, oh, maybe it's my communication with my spouse or or it's kind of more surface level things like that. Those are on the outer part of the onion. Yeah. Communication is probably a problem because that sense of self isn't there down at the center of the onion. Oh, I love that. It really goes to the root of the problem and mm -hmm. not just focusing on any of the, um, what's the word side effects. Mm -hmm. <laughs> or the, um, yeah. Just any of those things that manifest after the fact, like you said, communication, that's a really good um, way to say it. So that you're doing some coursework to help people understand this, but, and you're trying to share on social media, you're trying to get that word out there. And you're, I think it's great that that women can have a place to go to, to understand that. And I do that same thing. Um, but with 
really, if someone just were to come and ask you what that means, what do you, what's your go-to in answering why it's important and what it is? Um, what it means to have a strong sense of self, I think is that you have a clear idea of who you are. You know, what are the things that I love? What are the things that make me tick? Like, um, challenges that you have or weaknesses that you have, you know, you, you're aware of all of those things mm-hmm. and, be, and then the really important part, well, two other parts, and you like yourself in the context of those things, even mm-hmm. though you're aware of your weaknesses and your challenges and things, you still like who you are. Right. And then the most important part is that you're able to maintain that without other people validating for that for you. You're mm-hmm. not basing that sense of self around other people telling you you're good or other people telling you who you are or what you're like. You're able to maintain that without them right. doing that for you. Oh, and that's, that's hard. <laughs> it is in their, in their world today. It is so hard. So it's, it's definitely, it's definitely not what, how the world works, but with what you've seen with um, your research in particular, Tell us anything that you've noticed that further shows why that's important. And I don't know what we, if we can see really what into the research is right now, because you're yeah. in that, that I think it's amazing, especially BYU with those kind of people that really have even this lens of the gospel in it. Tell us what you're, what you're seeing. Um, I mean, I think that sense of self matters. I don't, I don't think most people understand how much sense of self matters. I don't even think most relationship researchers or educators understand necessarily how much that matters. But I think that, I think you can be going through the motions of a good relationship. You can be doing everything quote unquote, right. But as you're losing who you are in the context of that, it, it leads to a couple of other really, really problematic things. So um, specifically emotional fusion, which we can talk about more and self-silencing. And those two things are pretty similar, but it basically comes down to losing who you are within that relationship. And then you're not able to actually connect at a really genuine and intimate level with other people. And that could go for your marriage. That could go for friendships or relationships with your family of origin. It could go with anyone. Right. Right. And I know I was talking to a girl the other Are you, day. You're frozen. Oh, okay. So I had this conversation with this girl recently. I went to this networking event and she was talking about what you're saying there, that your, your relationships aren't very deep or mm-hmm. they don't even know who you are and you're stay. And so they may feel like they're really close with you, but you don't feel and reciprocate that back because you're not truly you like she says in a way which isn't I think is healthy and I think maybe a lot of people would agree that her mom views her as like her best friend and um but she as the daughter knows and believes my mom is not my best friend she hardly she really doesn't know much of who I am Mm -hmm. because it's mainly we talk about her and I don't I just kind of am there (laughs) so and, and but she's she's at a good level of knowing okay that's just what it is I don't, I don't not invest into that. I don't, I don't fuse myself to like, we're going to talk about. And so, yeah, it's in this, these things happen all the time. So tell us more than to jump into that emotional fusion. I think that's the first one you talked about. Mm -hmm. Things don't go well and you don't have a strong sense of self now that we've defined what it is. And it's really at the core of all that we do. And it really keeps us at a firm foundation, which I believe we're, we're, coupled with Christ with that. He knows who we are. We are solid because he also believes us in us. We believe in him and he's all about us having a solid sense of self. And then from there, if that does, but if it's not there and we don't feel that this emotional fusion is self-sacrificing or self-silencing starts to come. Mm-hmm. I'm sure sacrificing is definitely, yeah. part of <laughs> but tell us more about what that is. So emotional fusion is, it's exactly the opposite of having a strong sense of self. So if having a strong sense of self is knowing clearly who you are and being able to maintain that without validation from others, emotional fusion is really just merging your identity with other people. So, and you use the word codependency. It's essentially the same thing where you're not even clear on who you are. And so maybe you're taking ownership of other people's feelings or emotions 
I think that's a big one that a lot of us do, right? Especially maybe as moms, we feel responsible if our kid's having a bad day. And that's like different than wanting to support our kid through a bad day. That's one thing. If you've got a strong sense of self, you could do that. But if your kid's having a bad day and you're taking those emotions on yourself or feeling responsible to fix it yourself, that's a sign of emotional fusion. Right. Um, it can happen in marriages. It happens like crazy in marriages where you're just right. so locked into doing things together and feeling like you can't have that self outside of it. Maybe you're trying to control your spouse. That's emotional fusion. Or maybe you're looking to your spouse for approval or validation. Make me feel like I'm a good wife or make me feel like I'm a good husband. That's emotional fusion. Right. And it's one, one thing I was thinking of when you said that I was watching just the other day and um, there's this YouTuber called, there are these YouTubers called Cinema Therapy. I don't know if you've ever heard that. They're actually in Utah and what they do, it's a therapist and a filmmaker and their friends. And they decided to launch this YouTube where they, they do commentary on movies, popular movies. Uh -huh. I watched, so I watched the commentary on Twilight and oh. I did. I mean, it's just a guilty pleasure of mine. I'm not way into it now, but I was, especially since I I grew up with it. Mm -hmm. And I read the books came out when I was early in high school and I read them and I went out to the premiere with my friends and we dressed up a little bit. So anyway, but it talks a lot about how Bella has like no sense of self at all. And it's, it just makes total sense that she it's all it's a pretty messed up um the whole story is pretty messed up and there's so much drama because she she just doesn't care he says I'm dangerous I don't care and then <laughs> he takes things and takes advantage takes advantage of her and of course um Jacob comes into the picture and people may say he's great but then he still takes advantage of her and doesn't listen to what she really wants they don't really they both don't really give her her free will and she's really okay with it she's just kind of like this really flowing loosey goosey person girl that just has no idea really what she wants and she says she does but then it's it it doesn't she doesn't take ownership and try and so I it is all about to help as we would watch that to help the guy in the therapy help us to apply it to our life but he also knows that people just watch for fun too mm -hmm. so it's really interesting to watch these things we see in our in our entertainment, it's almost applauded that way. It's real more romantic to have it be that way. Uh -huh. The Shakespearean, like it's a Shakespearean attitude of being just so in love and nothing matters. We are just one. And I've dealt with this in my own life with my, with my husband. And I've, we almost separated because it became, it became so hard to break through and unlock myself off from him in that way to then have more of two steady people that are both doing right. the same thing and doing the same goals, but not that we were so enmeshed into such a way where it was, um, where it was toxic. And I yeah. know a lot of marriages are in, in that way. Yeah. It's possible. And, but it does start with whoever decides to really take that journey on. It's a really hard journey, but it's so possible to really um, and break down all those things from before and create a whole new start of this is solid sense of self for me. What I know I need to build from here yeah. out of active love for yourself. I, I feel like, yeah. And, and a lot of it is hard. Like you're saying, it is a hard journey because it does involve a lot of self-confrontation <laughs> and really looking at yourself and saying, what am I doing? That's putting my own well-being in the hands of other people or trying to make other people take ownership for who I am or my identity Right. And I feel like we're, especially as women, I feel like we're almost taught to do that throughout our lives, especially from a religious context. Right. Sometimes. You know, we're taught you're a woman is selfless. A woman is always giving. We're taught those concepts and that we almost feel guilty if we have our own desires or our own needs and things. But in reality, first of all, I don't think that that's what God wants for us to not develop ourselves at all. That's the whole purpose of why we're here, right? Is mm -hmm. to develop into who we're capable of becoming. And you've got to have a sense of self in order to be do that, in order to do that. Right. And then second of all, our marriages and our relationships with others are not going to thrive if we're not doing those things. We just get stagnant at best. We get stagnant at worst. We things start to break down. Like you were saying. Right. 
but that's again, not the point we, we want connection. We want growth and becoming, and those are the things that should be our goals. I love that you're talking about that religious aspect in it, it, because in the Christian world, it has been misinterpreted. This is just the, the culture. Of course, this is not how it should be. I think with what God wants us women to be, and I'm sure he doesn't boss around heavenly mother and have her just follow his script. And it's not also about that toxic femininity either. Mm -hmm. Um, So it's really finding that better balance of what's good and right for all people in this scenario to help it feel like there's a healthy say for everyone involved and that everyone can have their needs met and have a say. And it's just more beautiful that you can then from there create. I feel like when everything's matched finally at that way, you can then create endlessly. I think that's why God and Heavenly Mother have been able to do that because they are so in tune and know each other, but not that they're one, just one, and not right. that they're two separate islands, but yeah. they're working on it together. And it's really hard to do though. And so tell me what, what the, what, then the self silencing would be yeah. okay. number two. Let me just take one step back if that's okay. When yeah. you said God and heavenly mother. And when I say God, I actually mean both of them because you don't become God without the other. Oh, right. And so to me, yes. that's that beautiful balance of, um, they are partners. They aren't, you know, emotionally fused. They both have strong senses of self, I'm sure. And then they work together and have that genuine connection. So I think that's an important point, for, especially for women to know that that there is, uh, that we do have a female role model of this also. Um, but then moving into the self-silencing, um, it's very closely related to emotional fusion and it's similar, but I feel like it almost is a little bit easier under to understand. Um, so the idea behind self-silencing is that you're stifling who you actually are. So maybe your thoughts or your needs or your opinions in order to preserve a relationship. So you're thinking, well, if I just go along, then I won't rock the boat or I won't cause conflict with my partner. Or, um, you know, maybe if we're going out to dinner, I'm not going to say where I really want to go because it's easier to just go with the flow. Right. And over time we start to lose our sense of even like, I don't even know where I would want to go to dinner because I'm so used to not saying where I want to go. Mm -hmm. And then tied into that also is, um, like you had said, self-sacrifice, that actually is one of the four aspects of self-silencing is -hmm. this overly self-sacrificing. And it's not, it's not that sacrificing is a bad thing at all. As like, we all want to be sacrificing for the people we love. It's when we do it in order to feel good about who we are or in order to earn love from other people. Right. Which would come from that emotional fusion, right? Like, right. Oh my goodness. It really is just, it's a spiral downward. It yeah. doesn't, it doesn't help anything. And it's honestly just going to be creating more resentment overall for that mm-hmm. person that decides to do that. And what came to my mind, it was this idea that us uh, women tend to do this more, right? So we're talking about that and that it's, you're, you're honestly, it's going to be hard either way to speak up or it's going to be hard to, um, go through that bottleneck. It's going to be worse. Mm-hmm. It gets better because yes, yeah. you do start to say things. And I had in the past, I would start to, I would start to voice myself more and it almost, it felt like a total threat from my husband. Yeah. You never did that before. Yeah. You never said it that way before. Why now? Like, it's like, well, I feel like now is a, no better time than now. I, I need to start saying what I feel of what would be better for us of creating a family. And I feel like this may be helpful for this kid and let's work on it together. But before I would then see it. And a lot of women do this too. It's just, I would see it as, Oh, that's a battle. I I don't know if I want to pick it. So it's just, it feels like it's just easier just to put under the rug, but it doesn't. And that's exactly (laughs) self-science and we all do it, right? Like I've done it a million times too. And I know all about it and I still catch myself doing it all the time. It's a constant battle, but it's a good battle. It's a worthwhile battle. Oh, and what else you said too, with this, the decision, um, I mean, I've always, I've always heard that those that lack the confidence also have a hard time making decisions. I've heard of that before. And that I think then is tied into the 
like you said, you just don't know, you haven't practiced that muscle of really deciding and knowing, and it doesn't need to be seen as such a masculine thing to mm-hmm. just know and then go for it. Um, I think women can also know that and go for it. And um, balancing those energies, the masculine and fem- feminine is really a popular subject right now that I love to learn about. And it makes for much better life if you're able to move forward and make decisions quickly and confidently like that's actually really is what I want I mean as as small as where we're going to eat for dinner and as big as even for me thinking about maybe going back to school Uh my master's and going into counseling and I'd kind of shared that on social media a little bit that maybe I'd be doing that is in just being confident enough knowing like actually this is a school that really aligns with my values I've thought about it and even getting to that point of really pushing forward and say, I would really like to do this, but I'm, I'm definitely getting some heat on it. And it's, it's yeah, <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, I have been there, right. I decided <laughs> about four and a half years ago to go back to school and it was actually all tied in with learning about sense of self for me. And I was so interested in it and so intrigued by it that I was feeling like I wanted to go back to school to actually study it and learn more, right. but I did lose a relationship, a friendship over it. Somebody just did not like the idea and the friendship dissolved. And it was, that was hard, super hard. That's not what I intended going into it. Um, And in hindsight, it's better because I, there was actually a lot of emotional fusion in that relationship and it's better to not have that, but yeah, it's not an easy step forward always, Mm -mm, but I would never change it. I would never change having made that step forward. Good. And I'm sure that person showed other things that probably weren't best for you overall, it kind of leads mm-hmm. to a lot of different ways, but it, uh, and that's always what I've been told is like, it gets worse before it gets better that, and that's how a lot of therapy sessions go for me mm-hmm. or coaching sessions. And I'll go, I'll learn. And I get, I get that help. And I go forward and write down those couple of points that I know I'm going to have to work on this week, that week. And then I, I do it. And I feels like I did something wrong because yeah, yeah someone oh I can't make everyone happy now someone is crying over here someone is unhappy that I couldn't make it to this and I'm actually gonna be taking some time over here for this or whatever and it's not always the case unnatural to us because we're used to the other way yeah yes I so you said there were some other parts of the self um self-silencing tell us more about that Yeah. So we already covered, so silencing the self is one of the four parts, which is not speaking up. And then the self-sacrifice is one of them. All of this usually stems from what is called an externalized self-perception. So worrying a lot about what other people think. So if I'm worrying a lot about what other people think, I'm likely to do those other two things, right? Right. If I'm worried that somebody's not going to like my choice of where to go to dinner, it's easier to just not say it because I'm, I just don't want that invalidation. Or if I really am worried about what other people think, I'm going to try to serve and earn the love and respect that I'm craving. But then all of those things lead into, and you actually mentioned this, um, what is called the divided self. And it's a lot of resentment, a lot of that internal resentment that's boiling up. And you're, you're just feeling like you're putting on a happy face outside because again, you've got that externalized self-perception and you want everyone to think everything's going well. But um, in underneath it all, it's not, it's not the same person underneath it all. You just feel like almost like a Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde kind of a feeling like inside I'm angry on the outside. I'm pretending to be happy. And that doesn't feel natural Mm -hmm. or authentic to anybody. So, well, it's it. And I've talked about this phrase before. You feel like you're at war with yourself. That's definitely how it was with more of these earlier years of me coaching with talking more about intuitive eating Mm -hmm. and health before I dive more into this part and more of the life coaching side. Um, is I feel like I was at war with myself. I wanted to look good for everyone else, but I didn't feel good. I didn't feel like I wanted to go work out for the hour that day, but I feel like I had to. And um, I didn't really feel like eating chicken and vegetables (laughs) the day, but I would still try to do it because it was, you know, it seems like there's this path to take in the world in order to look a certain way. But I, I, if I, I would have bad dreams about being fat and all the things that that would come with and being rejected and my husband leaving me all the things. And, um, it's, I I knew at that point I was really needing some help because if it's that subconscious into my psyche, 
Dive needs some help. And I got some great help. And I went to the Center for Change in Orem and mm -hmm. um, I did their outpatient program. And there are so many people at all ages going there right now. And I went there after the pandemic and they had a huge influx of people coming in because mm -hmm. the pandemic put everyone through a tailspin. I'm not feeling out of control. So through 2020, they started to, they tried to gain control and, you know, diet. And that's exactly what I was doing. I was trying to gain control. And then the beginning of 2021, I decided I needed to go get some help. And I had to wait about six weeks before I can I, to be entered in because it was mm -hmm. pretty busy over there. Oh, <laughs> And they said that they had noticed that it's this whole influence, yeah. but well, that body image part is a big <laughs> one for women for 97% of women. Right. With that. Yeah. So, right. Well, I love hearing about this from you and this, it, when, of course we can go on and on about these things, but it is for anyone listening right now, I hope you're really thinking about specific examples of how you want to do that. And just know that you have a whole team of people that have been through this before. And so if you feel like you're implementing it and it's just getting worse, it's only because it's just a matter of time before it gets better. Yeah. And um, this could be for someone that is still single all the way till empty nesting and you ha maybe have some pretty deep habits with all your adult children or your yeah. family members yeah. of your family of origin. It's, it's all across the map. We all deal with this and the human experience is is dealing with this. I think, um, God knew we would have to swim through those waters to really understand how we can love ourselves and have that solid sense of self and that we are created in that such a way. He loves us that much better for having that particular personality person. And it's just beautiful. I think that if we can all understand that, I realize that, but anything else that you wanted to share and last things you wanted to say I mean, there's so much to talk about with this topic. It's, I mean, we've just scratched the surface, right? But it is such an important thing to just start to kind of look around and see, maybe even just start with where am I looking to other people for validation? Just kind of try to catch yourself in that because if you pay attention, you'll see it almost constantly. And that's just normal. We all do it. Like you don't have to beat yourself up or feel bad. We all do it. But when you can start to challenge yourself on that, little by little, you can take steps forward and do better on that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I noticed it yesterday. I posted a bunch yesterday <laughs> and I had it in a while. And then I had like this vulnerability hangover. Yes. <laughs> and that's what Brene Brown has talked about before, but I was sitting in it. I was like, okay, I mean, it's good to share it, but I, I could just leave it there. I just shared it. It's fine. And move forward. And people could take it or leave it. And people are really quite nice. Most of the time we it's, it's not as bad as we think. <laughs> yeah. Yeah it's more us in our head, but thank you so much for being here today. Really appreciate it. So where can people find you? Um, I've got a website, amberaprice.com or Instagram, amber.a.price. Great. Yeah. You're going to be that creator of helping people understand this and people can come to me for the coaching. Yeah. Right. Thank you so okay. much, Amber. See ya.